I mentioned earlier in the fundamental concepts the idea of loops. So loops are instances where people have nominated themselves, like I collaborated with myself. That's probably true. It's very metaphysical. It's probably not the thing that we most want to get out of the network. So I'm going to remove these self loops. And if I don't tell R to do that, it won't do it itself. And actually, I have to a few steps to do that. So I'm going to transform the network through what's called a simplify function. So I have here my colleague graph2. That's the name of the data structure after I had turned it into an iGraph feature. Um, well, I had colleague graph, and now it's colleague graph2. And it's the difference between colleague graph and colleague graph2 is I'm removing those annoying self loops. So I'm just saying simplify, simplify by removing multiple and removing loops. What multiple means is if there are multiple edges between the same people, I don't need that. That's just clutter. If I want to represent that someone's getting a whole lot of edges from someone else in some other instance where I might perceive that as important, I could weight the edge that way, right? I could say, oh, this person's nominated this person six or ten times. And that would be a lot cleaner representation than having lots and lots of lines where every single time the person said, I'm collaborating with them or I'm a friend, their friend. Okay, so I'm going to select that. I'm going to create this new little graph called Colleague Graph 2. And now we're going to work with Colleague Graph 2. But we're going to do the same things. So we've still got our basic layout that seems to be working OK for us. I'm going to still have the nodes I don't think are particularly important in gray and the more important ones in yellow. I could choose other contrasting colors. You know, they're natural colors like browns, blues, whites. Um, gray is OK, even purple. Those things work pretty well. Reds and blues can work, but uh, just as a general note, you want to do a visualization that will work for the most amount of people. So you, color blindness actually is something you want to consider. So like putting reds and greens right next to each other is not a, a great idea. Orange and blue is another form of color blindness. It doesn't work. So you want to avoid that mixture if you can. And also, um, when you're visualizing this, like you've got your great results and you're trying to show the world this, the projector can mess you up. So if you have very basic colors, the projector is less likely to um, distort what you're trying to say. So colors that have high contrast with each other are more likely to convey the story you want as opposed to very, uh, depending on vividness within the same color palette. So I'm going to, I'm trying to get rid of these nasty self loops. And let's see what we got. So I've simplified it, and I'm looking now at the bigger. OK, much better. Right Now I know it's not quite as metaphysical, not as ex existential, but it is clear. We could maybe do a little bit more, though, right? So I said that networks are graphs that have attributes assigned to it. The only attribute that we've been using right now is sort of an arbitrary number, like it's a unique ID. It's one, two, three, four. That's not um, particularly informative. We could do a little bit more. So we're going to read in um, an attributes file. This is commonly referred to as a node list. So if you're looking at networks uh, literature online and someone referenced a node list, all a node list is is it is a list that has the node's unique ID and then attributes that the analyst thinks is important associated with that ID. And in this case, I know there's two distinct kinds of people that are in these collaboration networks. I've got researchers and I have graduate students. And so I want to indicate them um, by using color. I'm going to keep the sizing by in degree because I still think that's important. And now I'm hoping that this will give the network just a little bit more punch by conveying a little bit more information because we expect because this is a collaboration network, that it's important to understand, well, are graduate students just hanging out with each other? Are they just having a research collaboration with uh, their advisor, which would be sort of a young graduate student, and we might see that as a pendant, a person that is just sort of connected to one researcher, not connected to a lot of those? Or are graduate students really getting integrated in these collaboration networks by working with both other graduate students and with faculty? So to make these changes, I'm reading in this attributes file. Um, 
I'm calling that colleague attributes. I'm putting this under the vertices set of vertices options because these are attributes assigned to the vertices. And I am going to read this in. Well, if I don't, what did I just do? I think I want to undo that, whatever I just did. If you have this happen to you, because it's relatively easy, you can hit edit and do undo. Okay, that looks better. And actually, I do want to read the attributes file, so I want to go all the way up to the top. And I'm going to run. And it looks good. So maybe I was a little hasty there by running those all together. I'm looking over and I see the colleague's attribute file. I'm actually going to open up the file this time just to check that um, it vaguely resembles what I want. So see, I have source, so that's the person sending the tie. And I have status, which is researcher or graduate student. And it looks OK. Let me just scroll down, make sure there's no missing values. Yep, no missing values. Good to go. I'm going to X out of this. And I can now go check my visualization again and see if I've got my different, yes. So I have red nodes in the middle. Those are um, my researchers and I have my blue nodes sort of outside of that and those are my graduate students. And that's not too surprising because the graduate students are being pulled into these conference situations and into these settings uh, because they have an affiliation or some association with faculty. So now we can tell how important, at least in terms of receiving ties, people are by the size. We can tell the type of person they are within this network by looking by using color. We've now simplified the edges because while we think directionality is important, we're getting directionality by getting by having its size in a particular way. So this is good. This is pretty good. Maybe we can play with the layout just a little bit uh, to make it a little bit clearer. We might little, want a little space. Things were sort of gelled into the center of the network. So how am I going to do that? I've got, I have my layout. It's still Frickman Goldberg, but I've added this option called NITER, and I have NITER equals 500. And what all NITER is is an option that's saying, space me out just a little bit more. You can look up on the iGraph documentation, which I have a URL to, to look at what, what are some reasonable NITER values. So I'm going to select this, and we'll see what happens. OK, yes. That looked, well, a micro scale looks better. Let's see what it looks like inside. Oh, wow. That looks much better. So I can now much more clearly see who my prominent actors are, who's in the center, who's not. This is actually beginning to really tell me some information. Let's see, maybe we can play with the layout just a little bit more, but uh, frankly, I think we're pretty close. OK. Now, we talked to, we've looked at discuss, or collaboration networks. We're going to talk about discussion networks just for a second or two. That was the other kind of network we're having. And we're doing it somewhat as a reinforcement. So I already know I don't like loops, so I'm just going to simplify this object right now and not deal with that later on. So I'm doing that here. Um, I like I like my layout and I like that NIDR option, so I'm just going to keep that. I'm going to keep the Fruitman Goldman for now, and I'm going to keep the NIDR and see how it works on this network. And we may change if it doesn't work um, as well as it did on the last one. I think that the size sizing by degree makes sense. I'm still going to um, uh, divide it by five or times it by 0.5 because. I suspect that it has the same quality that we may have people that are super connected that wipe everyone else out if I don't um, scale the values. And I'm going to import in right away my node list to get those attributes because I've already established that's important. I'm OK with leaving the edges gray. And I'm going to, oh yeah, I'm definitely taking care of the arrow size thing right now because that was awful. All right, so let's see how this network looks like. Running through this, okay. All right, 
and it looks like it, it, it changed in my uh, Zoom, so I'm coming up here. So, okay, this is interesting. Uh, it's got a similar feel. It's a little more sparse. We also have um, a little, we ha this is our first multi-component graph. So what are components? Components are parts of the network that are connected. If a network's fully connected, it only has one component. This network, we can see there's a main component, and then there are uh, three little components. We've got one um, little triad out here, and then we've got two little, I mean, they look like dumbbells, but basically uh, two little dyads. What this suggests is that this is a, a little bit more broken up network. Uh, I suspect that's because the collaboration network is uh, a bigger, st sort of stronger tie. The dyads and triads here, let me see if I can actually uh, get in a little closer. Can I zoom? Let me see if I can do that. Increase. I'm just curious if, yeah, so those triads, like you have red, blue, blue. That's a, a faculty member and their two research assistants. And we've got a blue-red and a blue-red, another faculty and their undergraduate or their graduate student. So these are people that are sort of hanging. These are our wallflowers, essentially. And then we've got our main component of uh, people who are interacting with each other. So we're going to just try a little bit different layout here because uh, I promised that last time. And I'm going to do something called, um, it's a Kamadi K. It's another standard spring layout. Um, it's between, the, those two are good layouts to sort of start with and see if you like them. The advantage is that if there are big changes in distance, I should see that a little bit more clearly in this network of this network of the size, but um, We'll see. Partially, I just like experimenting, frankly, and seeing what looks better. So I'm going to run this and bring this up. Zoom it. OK. And you can see a little bit clearer the structure of the triad. Um, and you can see a little bit clearer just the extent of the distance um, of some of the pendants from the core. I would say it's a slight improvement, but, the, but not massively. So this concludes our uh, lab of visualizing um, relatively simple uh, discussion and collaboration networks. I now wanted to talk a little bit about the uh, implications that network visualization has for survey design and also how survey design influences the uh, network visualization and network analysis in general options that we have.